My name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, White is the Color. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. This story has a single point to make. The struggle for the preservation of life. It centers around the men and women who have dedicated their lives to that struggle. Their title, Doctor of Medicine. There's too much dignity and too much suffering in the fact of life to justify any romantic compromises with truth. There's excitement enough and triumph enough in truth. Tonight's case in point is Estelle Alberta Collins, 29 years old. She was married seven years before the first baby began. That means a lot. In her sixth month of pregnancy, she began to develop symptoms I didn't like. And two weeks later, April 11th, the final answer was spread out on a glass slide under a microscope in the laboratory of Dr. George E. Fletcher, hematologist. Not much doubt about it. Not in my opinion. Want to try to get Dr. Steiner for me? Yes, sir. Dr. Steiner's office? Oh, yes, Dr. Fletcher. Yes, he's right here. Just a moment, please. Dr. Fletcher with a report for Mrs. Collins. Gotcha. Hello, George. How are you? Not too bad. A little busy. George, you work up the report on Miss Collins? Yeah. Uh -huh. What's your impression? Uh. Yeah. I see. No, I guess I was just looking for a miracle. All right, George. Thank you. We got a phone number for Miss Collins' husband. Place of business? Well, I believe he works at home, if I'm not mistaken. The commercial artist or something. Excuse me, Doctor. Let me see. The laboratory report was far from encouraging. It was the last thing in the world I wanted to do, but there was no choice. I called the patient's husband, a self-employed commercial artist, and made an appointment to meet with him that night in my office. Because of her condition, I asked him not to mention it to his wife.
sometime. You know, she'd be feeling better. And, you know, sometime in the morning. All right. How about 11 o'clock? Yeah. I guess I want to go home. All right, Eastcliff, come to Mother. Tell her everything. What's the matter? Would you like that old nasty $3 steak we have for dinner? Oh, it's nothing. I was just thinking. Yeah? Don't forget the latest news and sports in just five minutes. How are you feeling, Stella? I don't know. What have you got in mind? I didn't see Holloway tonight. That was just an alibi. I went to see Dr. Steiner. I was him on the phone this afternoon. What did he want? You sound like you're going to club me. I am. Steiner wanted to make sure. He had a couple of the other doctors check it. They went over the whole thing. Went over what? What do you mean? The baby. Oh, no. He said we'd lose the baby. Well, Steiner said everything went well. The baby be a normal, healthy kid. Well, then what is it? Tell me. Larry, don't be silly. Tell me, what is it? It's you, Stell. Me? That's why they took all those blood tests. Why? Well, there's something wrong with you. It's leukemia. Leukemia? Something to do with the white blood cells. It, it's no good. There's too many white blood cells. It's no good. Well, what does it mean? What do I do? It's acute leukemia. Well, what happens? How do they treat it? Do I take shots or something? I'm going to give it to you straight, Stell. It's fatal. I can't save you. You want the rest? It's fast. They can prolong it a while, that's all. How long, Larry? A year? Six months? Less? We'll see Dr. Stein in the morning. He can tell you better than I can. And the baby? Good chance the baby will live. Pretty good chance. Not much about dying before. The pain in the neck. Larry. Larry. Hold me. Hold me. This may help to give you some idea of what I'm talking about. You see, among other things, the bloodstream is composed mainly of blood cells, red blood cells and white blood cells. Now, whenever there's an excessive number of either one, it's a pretty sure sign of danger. And in your case, it's the white blood cells. You understand? I think so. Well, let me see if this will make it a little more clear. You see, the red blood cells carry the supply of oxygen to the tissues in the various parts of the body. Now, when the red cells are crowded out by the great number of white cells, that supply of oxygen is gradually choked off. I'm oversimplifying, but in effect, that's what's happening. I see. And there's no doubt in your mind? I'd be lying if I said there was. The symptoms, the condition of the lymph nodes, spleen, your general tendency to hemorrhage, that could point to several things. But the laboratory reports narrowed it down. You mean the blood test? Blood test, chest picture we took, and especially the examination of the marrow specimen. 
Miss Collins, I've had the opinion of experts. And it all points to one thing. I see. You might keep this in mind. The doctor is only a human being. He can make a mistake just like anybody else. He's not the almighty. And my baby? You sure it won't affect him? For some reason, we don't understand. The leukemia stops at the placenta. He'll have a good chance. If he's eight months along when he's born, I'd say he'd have a good chance. You think I'll last that long? Honestly? Well, it might even be longer. We can't say. One thing I can tell you, we're going to help you all we can. How? But we've got to understand this. It's not a cure. It's what we call a palliative treatment. See, in your case, the use of x-ray therapy is out of the question. It might harm the baby. Oh, no, I wouldn't want that. The baby comes first. Well, there are some drugs that have been developed. They won't harm the baby, and they could help. And they might give me a little more time? Well, the more effective the drug, the longer the time you'll have. And the longer I live, the better chance the baby has. I guess it's silly. Do you think I might do it? Live long enough to see the baby born? Right. It's possible. It'd be kind of nice to see him, wouldn't it? See what he looks like. The color of his hair. To see him just once. had no association whatsoever with her pregnancy. One of the critical moves in the struggle for the life of the unborn Collins baby was made the following morning, April 21st, 10 a.m. Those directly associated in the case, George A. Fletcher, M.D., hematologist, Avril B. Morrison, M.D., hematologist originally consulted, Arnold James Wesley, M.D., St. Charles Hospital resident physician, and myself. Initial therapy includes prescribing for the patient a daily dosage orally of 0.5 milligrams of a folic acid antagonist, hemithopterin. It's a drug designed to reduce the excess number of white cells in the blood to destroy them at their source. In some previous cases, it's proved toxic. How the patient might react, we have no idea. Also, we have no choice. Whole blood will be transfused as needed. April 30th, 2.30 p.m. A dosage of 0.5 milligrams of amethoptrin has shown some effect. White count 60,000. It's possible the drug is retarding the progress of the disease. In any event, the baby is nine days closer to life. Look, now there's going to be no argument to the name, no matter what your mother says. Okay. Lawrence Randolph Collins, Jr. From? Yeah. Not as unless it's a little girl. Then you can name it after your mother. How have they been treated? Food pretty good? It's all right. The nurses or something. Too bad you can't be around to hear it. What do you mean? Every night, regular, 11 o'clock. We start playing shuffleboard with the bedpans. May 12th, the patient's white count, 80,000. She sustained two minor internal hemorrhages to date. May 18th, the patient is approaching her 30th week of pregnancy. White count, over 90,000. No sign of remission. Patient steadily declining. A complete setup for possible emergency surgery is placed in the patient's room. May 26th, the patient has sustained additional internal hemorrhages. The dosage of amethoptrin has become toxic. Patient's mouth is inflamed. White count, 100,000. Chances for the baby's survival, we can't be sure. Dr. Steiner. Yo, Wesley. Another hemorrhage once you start. You move her up 
surgery? Yes, move her up there now. Wesley, you call Mr. Collins? Call him. All right, Wesley, I'll be right in. Yeah. I arrived at St. Charles Hospital a few minutes past 3 a.m. Preparations for surgery were just about completed. I changed my clothes and went immediately to the scrub room. The hospital resident, Dr. Wesley, was standing by to assist. How's it look, Russ? Pretty sour. Still hemorrhaging? Yeah, it seems to be. How is she? Poor. Pressure's way down. Respiration. 30. Very shallow. Pulse weak and thready. About 140. I'm assisting her now. Doctor? I clean out the mouth. No breathing? No, doctor. Trachea catheter. Regular. 
caffeine sodium benzoate. Three minutes. Right. Give me the ether. Come on, let me have it. Caffeine sodium benzoate. Right amount. Mr. Collins? Tell him I'll be out and talk to him in a minute. Do you want me to tell him his wife died? 